Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. Actually, hello to the Chicas and the Chicos today, because why not coconut? Let's get the ladies first. Um, let's have a chat about uh, how my humiliation um, ended against uh, the mighty Komodo. For those of you who don't know, <coughs> excuse my coughing, um, I uh, played a six um, games match against uh, the computer program called Komodo across the weekend, Saturday and Sunday night. Um, three matches, uh, three games each night, six games. I was playing with the night odds, meaning that the mighty Komodo, as you can see on the board, was playing with that one of his knights. Earlier on, uh, I mean, er by earlier, I mean years ago, I remember that Hikaru played a match against Komodo with various odds, two pawns missing, but e4, d4 is played for white, f2 pawn is various kinds of odds, and mostly uh, the machine destroyed the human. And uh, last year, there was a match between Australian Grandmaster David Smurden and Komodo with the same conditions. And um, David won that 4-2. I lost this match 4.5 to 1.5, which was a very comprehensive defeat or victory, uh, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and before I get into the actual games, I would like to tell you a little bit about the whole story and uh, what was going on here. So... Um, the developer of uh, Komodo is a, an American grandmaster called uh, Larry uh, Kaufman and he approached me and asked me if I would be willing to play uh, a match under those conditions. I happily obliged um, and uh, I've got no regrets whatsoever <coughs> with uh, doing this match. That being said, um, I never ever enjoyed playing against a, a computer and I dislike it even more. Uh, after this utter trashing that I received. A couple of thoughts about the match. A few mistakes I have made that I think impacted the outcome of the match uh, were, A, I shouldn't have agreed to play this late, but I did so because it wanted to be, it wanted to make it accessible uh, to both the European and the American viewers and so I started an extremely late 11 p.m. Uh, time which meant that the, the, the both nights it dragged well into the morning not that I'm using it as an excuse but it certainly didn't help uh, I am extremely busy at the moment and I have been very busy with producing uh, content for various platforms in particular Chessable, you know that uh, if you don't, then I'm telling you now that my course with Judith Polga is already out. Please go and check it out. Uh, it's one of the greatest uh, things I've done in my chess life and it was an amazing opportunity and uh, I am eternally grateful for that uh, to have happened. Having said that, that meant that I had next to no time whatsoever to prepare. Then again, I don't know if I could have prepared, and even if I had prepared, it would have made much of a difference. Last but not least, I had a bad feeling that this was going to be the case, and it actually did happen exactly the way I anticipated, and that is that I regularly ended up in positions where I was easily winning, in terms of you look at the position and you go like, yeah, it's winning. But it's very, very tricky to actually find an exact way to finish it off. I will show you examples of this. And I just ate my time in almost every single game. And as soon as you are back down to two, three minutes against the machine, fully well knowing that you can't possibly make a mistake, it's very, very challenging. So overall, <coughs> I am disappointed about the score. I think I should have and could have scored better than this. But um, I also think that I hate to play against engines. So, <coughs> excuse me, on that very positive note, let's uh, have a look at uh, some of the games we have played. So one of the things that Komodo kept on doing, and that was based on its previous match against uh, Alex uh, Lenderman, was that they figured out that uh, the reverse touch is one of the best go-tos with this uh, structure, uh, or rather with uh, the missing B1 knight. Um, to play, Alex played a blitz match. So six minutes plus one second increment with the same conditions as in night odds, and he couldn't win. Like he, he scored a three-all draw uh, tie. And uh, on this note, 
now the same match will be repeated with another Grandmaster, uh, Grandmaster Anthony Wierig. Uh, he's going to play again 15-10 just like we did. Six games, we'll see. So anyway, we had this uh, reverse Dutch setups and it was very interesting because in almost every single game for a very, very long time, I was very happy with how I was going. I mean, hello, welcome Sherlock. Of course you were because you were a piece up. But still, a lot of things I felt went my way. Like in this game, all the way up to here, I was very, very happy with how things uh, had been progressing. But here I made a uh, an interesting choice after A4, A5, H4. At this point, and hate me for all you like, or tell me, call me a noob, whatever, be my guest. When the engine starts playing moves like this, as a human, you get you become a little bit nervous, and that's actually in the summary I forgot to mention that this is the last thing that psychologically and mentally to overcome this is it, just an extreme barrier to know that the computer never makes a mistake, and so I kept on second guessing myself and triple and quadruple checking everything I did and decided to do, which costs me a lot cost me a lot of time. Um, I will say this because I'm very curious if I can provoke a lot of uh, hate uh, messages out of this, but I have spoken about this match before the match took place to a friend of mine who is not a chess player and knows not an awful lot about chess. And I told him that this match was coming up. I was playing against a beast that would put away any human without losing a single game out of 100. And uh, I'm going to play with knight odds, which is huge. But still, I don't know if I will win. And then when he tried to figure out what this knight odds meant, I said to him that no human could beat me with knight odds. And he found it absolutely astonishing that I said that because he didn't think that knight odds was so great that uh, that was going to be an issue. Now, do I still think that no human could beat me with knight odds? I certainly do think that in terms of a match. I don't think that if I played against a human uh, in a six game match with the same conditions, they would stand a chance, any human. So Maggie. And the reason why I'm saying it is there are two reasons. A, because it sucks, man, to play a position like this with white when it's constantly on your mind that you are pieced down. And even if you weren't, this position was nothing to write home about. Secondly, a human cannot play <coughs> as fast as an engine can and therefore with the times far more balanced than it was against the match errors on either side are a lot more balanced out than here when we knew that the computer is never gonna make a mistake so and the more you expand the time control um, the more likely that I could compete with the machine anyway so here I started to worry a little bit about um, this kingside attack, all these pawns coming up into my face. And so I started playing a little bit too energetically. And instead of my initially plan knight b6, which is totally fine, I decided to accelerate things by throwing a pawn at him. The reason why this thinking was faulty was because if I actually had spent time here, I would have found the idea that I found a move later when it was already too late, which was that after c4 takes, takes g5, Rook d8, bishop g2, I realized that h5 doesn't really worry me because after knight c5, I will take back with the f pawn and then I'm going to play rook a7 to cover up the f7 check, <coughs> excuse me, fret, and I am mint, golden. And that's how the game went. He played, well, it played h5, I played rook h7, a7, sorry. And uh, at this point, I realized that once again, take, take, f6, I drop back, f7, check, I go here, and there is nothing there. Now, if I had realized this motif a tad earlier, then I would have played here knight b6 without sacking the pawn and, you know, taking unnecessary risks and take it from here. And I very much doubt that I would have lost this game. But these little mistakes all add up and now after uh, rook d8 bishop back knight c5 h5 rook a7 i played a4 which i thought was good and here came a very nasty surprise that flipped the whole game on its head i really didn't like this move and i spent an eternity trying to meet it best take take and be free i don't know why 
but I didn't even consider this move a possibility. And it's really unpleasant because they want to play bishop a3 and then all of a sudden white has got quite well placed pieces and um, it's not that clear. And you are looking at the evaluation, you go like, dude, it's still minus four. Yeah, I know. Try it and you will feel it. When <clears throat> all of a sudden realize that your opponent has played that they never had before and you know that your opponent is never going to make a single mistake, these things become a lot more blurry. So I played rook f7, which was probably a mech type of move, but I wanted to reduce the threats that I needed to look out for. <coughs> bishop a3 came, and I dropped this bishop back to move out of the b4, b5 fork. b4 came, 96 came, and at this point I realized that um, I needed to give the piece back, which I did. And even here we are still a lot more ahead and that was fully conscious of me but again the mentality in me was like oh bugger i no longer am a piece up and you can't help but think like that and so you look upon it as a trend and so you go like i'm losing because the trend is that i started off with a clean night up and now it's just mess and by this stage unfortunately i can't recall maybe if i went back i could <clears throat> from memory i had about three minutes here and the engine was constantly on, like, 13 minutes, 12 at, at the least. Bishop went back to c1, I went to c5, knight f3, and this was the time when I really, really began to worry about, oh my god, like, e5 was hanging, knight g5 is bending. So I went in, and again, I also overlooked this move. Such a typical engine thrust. And even here, according to the eval, it's a, it's a draw. But I would challenge any human living to hold this as black with two and a half minutes on the clock versus 10 against Komodo and see how you go. For the record, the engine plays at about 3,600. You heard that right. That's where it's rated. Knight f6 takes, takes. And um, it, it turned into a very, very curious endgame. And I know that I'm playing a fair few moves rather quickly, but I want to show you a lot. And I don't want to make this video too long. So we went into this end game and I thought that surely, surely I should survive this, right? Like it's triple C pawns. But the thing is that the position is extremely dynamic. My king is a little bit ticklish. And the main feature is that the two bishops are absolutely vicious, man. And by now I have no time. So now I'm on about one minute. With 10 second increment, when I say I have no time, I never ever am going to lose on time. That's not going to happen. But what's going to happen is that the quality of my play is going to drop drastically. Rook c8 was fine-ish. Bishop b2 takes, takes, rook c4. And at this point, I was like, man, I'm going to play this for a win. He plays, oopsies. Now I'm just ruining the fun. He plays c3. I played a3. I'm like, okay, the pawn is guarded. What can happen? And then this move came, and boy, good luck meeting this. Like all kinds of very filthy discovered checks are hitting me. King K cheat is entirely out of the question because it walks into that fatal pin. And so you go like, what then? And so I thought, okay, I will sack the exchange because I'm still having two pawns for it. And I will just fortify my position like so. And I'm still not losing. This was actually one of the best performances across the match I put up. Despite of the fact that I lost in the end. Rook f8. King f7. And it's very unfortunate that I actually can't escape this bind properly. Rook g4. Rook e3. This was a move that I also overlooked. That was the last moment in the game. When I executed a move. And I was like. No way am I going to lose this. No way. And then this came, and then I realized that it is extremely difficult to meet this threat. Or at least I noticed the threat. I had 50 seconds on my clock, and I'm like, poo, what do I do? And I played King F8, which is still the computer's top choice, by the way. And then uh, Rook B3, and this is where it goes out of hand. 
And here I thought, ah, bugger it, I'm losing. I would just throw in rookie four, which I thought was a really cute move with the idea that if they take this, I go here, they take this E2. <coughs> and then pawns are rolling in, but of course I can't do that. So, uh, yeah, whatever. I thought that this was cute. And then the engine did something that made me go like, what? Like I just threw this in, I had like 30 seconds on my clock here. And then the engine went rook takes and then took on e7. And for a second I went like, what? Like, hello, I'm, am I winning? And then I took it and then I realized that there is a check here first. Absolutely breathtaking stuff, by the way. Then take c7 and king g2 and I've got nothing. I just have nothing, man. Just caught up with my pawn. And the worst part is, is that I don't have enough time to go around and get this pawn. I, I just have got nothing. King here, king here, king here, king here. And that's it. I have just nothing. And so I called it a day. Um... <coughs> That was the first game. Second game, I did a mouse slip um, in a very complex position. And um, Larry decided, actually, this is what I did here. Uh, I was doing my usual chess.com thing where I'm clicking on a square and then it played queen e5 for me. I don't know. I never analyzed this. I've considered Larry to be very, very generous. And I would like to thank him again for that, for deciding to give me a draw for that. The position is quite a mess still. So I don't know how it would have gone. And then I lost the third game, which was particularly fascinating because look at how this opening goes. Total stock standard reverse Dutch again. And the machine plays knight d3 and then jumps back. And when stuff like this happens, you can't help but go like, I'm going to kill it. Like, what nonsense is this? I'm a piece up. It goes back and fro, to and fro with the knight. I was like, yeah, you're dead, man. You, you just, I'm just going to kill you. And it, it, it's such an emotional roller coaster to play against the computer because then you bump into the first problem and you go like, oh, poo. Like here, knight d7, I'm like, two pairs of pieces are coming off. On your bike, get out. And then the engine goes d4. I played f5, I just wanted to kill play, and I did one of the greatest strategic errors of my life in this game. So watch how I do that. c3, knight e7. So here, I'm like, okay guys, I'm just going to chuck that knight on e4. Please resign, let's get on with this match. Yeah? So h4 comes. I really, immediately here, should have gone nah. And for some reason, like the idiot I am, I was so obsessed with this idea that I didn't want to delay it thinking that the machine will throw something at me and then I can't do that. So I did not play h5 here, which would have clocked up the king's side forever. And then all I have is bang, 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 take on d4 and that should be a fairly simple win. Instead I go here, then the machine does that. Again, like what a self-confidence booster, a total meaningless move. And Komodo played a lot of these. Like it would play a couple of moves that indicate a plan. And it would throw in two totally meaningless moves. And so it meant I was on a high here. Like, oh, actually, I'm going to kill you. And here again, I'm like not playing H5. And you probably who is watching this now, you go like, dude, you played horrible chess. I would have beaten this machine six out of six. And I think you are totally in your right to say that because I did play very badly and you probably do think that you would beat it six love. I didn't. That uh, All I'm going to say is I didn't. I played 94. That's my greatest regret in the whole match that I didn't play H5 there because all the complications arose or even here, oh my God, from me completely forgetting it. And when I played this, I said to the audience that, I'm going to play h5 next just to be sure that I will shut this down or soon. And I still didn't do it. And then it came. Now, 
Is it relevant? Totally not. Not in the sense that I'm still just as winning as I was before. But now the machine has something to play for. And remember what I told you about um, finding it very difficult to break them? Like I didn't see e5 here for one, which would have been a cool move. And in general, you feel very reluctant to engage with the machine in tactical skirmishes because you know that that's where they excel. So my plan here was caveman triple up and go in. And you can't really blame me for that, right? So he goes g4, I go king f7 to defend g6, queen h2, I will go <coughs> bishop d5. At this point, I wanted to shut the bishop down and that was another thing that I failed to do. Because here, I played rook c6, wanting to attend to take, 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 and then g6 hanging. And I moved the queen away, which I more than likely should have moved back this way, if at all, or just play b4. Because after take, 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 I just take, 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 and this is carnage. Like rook h8 actually is just winning the game. And I saw this motive, and I still didn't play b4 which would have shut down the bishop forever. And again, a5, a4, and I just win. Didn't do it. What did I do? I went back. And at this point, I spent an eternity calculating rook c2, the idiot I am. And I figured that after take, 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 if I take here, I didn't like this check. And then I felt like my king was feeling a little bit funny. So what I wanted to make work was to take here and then after rook here, take here. But here after queen here, I don't have a check. And after rook check king here, I didn't feel quite comfortable with entering rook h7, queen g5. I thought that this was, this is not the type of stuff you do when you're playing against the computer that never makes a mistake tactically. And I had to evaluate this from this position with like five minutes on the clock. So I just went like, no, stop this. I'm just going to play here and not go in. And then I just kept on playing moves here and I wanted to crack him on the queen side. And look at how beautifully I get destroyed here. Totally winning position. I take this, I go back to defend this. For the record, um, yeah, no, sorry, no. Well, that's to come later. I took this. And then they played queen g5. <clears throat> and um, this was one of the motives in the game that didn't occur to me at all, which again, you would say is utterly ridiculously stupid. But I could have played here this, this, this. And there is not an awful lot left in the position for white to do. Because uh, the h5 counter pin, pin is going to be deadly. Now, instead I lost in a very, very spectacular way. And i tell you what I was losing my time over here. What I was losing my time over was the fact that here I wanted to pull back to d5. And I'm actually going to shut down the analysis because I want to know if I'm correct or not without the analysis. And then I noticed, and again, you are thinking like this when you're playing the engine, I'm like, hang on a sec, take, 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 take. And if I take, then check and check mate. I actually saw this mate, which I was extremely proud of myself for, because that's the reason why I didn't play here, the otherwise in very logical looking bishop d5. And because of I saw this motive, I got rattled. And I'm like, oh my god, this is on. And then I started to look at just random moves to see if that threat works if d5 square is not clocked up. And uh, even that there, no, there is actually nothing there. Now I can walk. The problem there was a timely d5, which I still managed to suck in in the game like so. And when this landed on the board, psychologically I was lost. Because... I knew that I couldn't take with the bishop because that would block up the square and there's no escape and I die to the previous queen sack. And so I had to come back and here I entirely forgot 
that my rook was shut out of the defense and g6 was on. Like, I kid you not, I just totally forgot. I just pulled the queen bishop back and when he took on g6 and f5, I'm like, oh boy. That's how I'm ending up, up with not a single win of the day. And I'm dead. That That's how I lost this. I went check, he blocked it, take, take. Rook in check, king up. Takes, <clears throat> takes. And here, I mentioned a funny line to the audience, which was based on, yeah, I saw, how did I, <coughs> I don't remember, some queeny eight ideas occurred to me, but I didn't even look into this. And, um, ouch. That is when you go like, it's not fun to play with machines. Check, and I can't block with the queen because queen promotes, and I did, and I die. So that was my first day. Rather rough, you would say. Could say. Um, following day. I started off with the win. <clears throat> so the machine went for a close Sicilian. And here I managed to keep everything under control throughout the game. Which was what I found the most difficult to do with the engine. To constantly generate positions where I had stuff to play for and they didn't. So here, like again, I don't want to add commentary. Because these moves that I'm playing as black would be identical. If it weren't a piece down Sicilian. Cool Sicilian. So I started to push pawns up, gain some space. I was very, very cautious not to allow anything. So even the a5 pawn I covered up like mad. Then I chucked the knight on b4. We traded it off. I traded the bishop. That was the first time, again, when I was very optimistic about my chances. And almost every single game, like I told you, I had this emotional roller coaster that I'm like, I'm killing it. Check. There. I'm occupying the big diagonal, also known as the long diagonal. Like, what could go wrong here, right? I played king f7. And here again, my plan was actually to play h5. And the reason behind king f7, I was quite proud of this, was to come here. By the way, just so that you will understand a very good analogy between this game and the last one, note, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, that despite of the fact that I'm totally winning, my minor pieces have got extremely, extremely limited scope. And the, the last game made me hit chess for a solid day about how I got humiliated by the fact that I had an extra piece and neither could do a simple thing. And here too, the computer thrives on this, a beautiful blockader, and my pieces are worthless. Obviously, I'm totally winning because I can maneuver them around, but it's just such a, like it really wears you out like, it's just so tiring, man, to play game after game with a piece up and still you feel like it's such a an uphill battle. Now, this is a threat. So I couldn't play h5 just yet. So I did this. <clears throat> the idea was that if the knight went to h3, I would play h6, read out the bishop here, and then h5, knight in 19. He allowed me to come in here, and this was the point when I went, like, if I lose this game... I'm going to be like, you know, so I stopped the check. I rerouted the bishop. I even blocked off the a-pawn. And when queen trade offer came here, I'm like, yeah, if I don't win this man, I will be so upset. And even here, it's so hard to crack it. Like you're like, well, why not g5? Yeah, I know g5. And look at my two pieces now. And I also see the evaluation just as you do, but obviously, A, I don't see during the game. Two, yes, I know I'm a piece up and I'm winning. But again, if I challenge you to come up with a winning plan here for black, and you have got a minute and a half to do so, good luck, Chuck. I uh, defended c5 so that the bishop would get some mobility. Um, and my plan at this point was to come here, here, Put the bishop back here, then take and then occupy the g-file. And for this reason, at this position, 
the engine decided to change the structure and took me and then played g4. Oh, and by the way, this is the last addition that I really should have said in the intro. When I play the, against the engine, you might see that after some moves that the engine plays, the Eva goes up for me. The reason for this is because the engine doesn't play the best moves all the time on its current setting. They use a, the, the so-called Monte Carlo algorithm, I believe it's called, or whatever. I really know nothing about uh, programming. And the idea behind that is, is to play the moves that are the most likely to cause the greatest amount of trouble for a human, as opposed to play the best move on the board. I don't know if it makes sense, but for example, let me give you a very crude example. I've got queen rook, they have got a rook. On the first given opportunity, if I could, I could easily sack away my queen for a rook and then play a king rook versus king where they have no chance whatsoever. And although technically, from the engine's point of view, that's a massive improvement because now it's not a full queen down, it's a rook down, which is like half the disadvantage. It's guaranteed loss. And so the Monte Carlo argument, uh, um, algorithm in that situation would probably try to avoid me being able to sack my queen for the rook because then there is more leg room for the computer to pull a swindle. So that, just bear in mind, that here, for example, g4 according to this engine's eval is terrible. Bishop e7, rook here, and that was the point of the game where I was very happy and proud of myself that I found that rook h8 was probably a good idea to sack the f5 pawn just so that uh, my pieces can enter and the rook can come back. And then here he went for this sack and I went like, if I, yeah, I have to win this. And I did. So here I mopped up without too many dramas. Here actually I even walked into a, a, um, a fork on purpose. Exactly what I just told you. Um, because, how was that fork again? Let me think for a sec. I don't even remember how I saw that this was potentially an executable trick because this no wait what was it again here i remember that at one point i allowed him or wanted to allow them a, a sequence where they could have forked one of my rock uh, two of my rocks but would have meant further simplifications and i'm just like yeah whatever i'm happy to go with that um but yeah the engine fell apart here allowed me to take the knight and then i went on to win um this is irrelevant, and then I will show you the last game. This was, I was shell shocked by this game. <coughs> like this, this allowed a, or rather added a very, very bitter end for my whole feelings or impression about this match because I just felt like an, an idiot. I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. After this game, I just felt like I was a total idiot. So he plays this, and I'm like, dude, your piece down and you're trading, like, bishop for knight on top of that? I'm like, bring it on. And then I go into this rigid structure. Probably e5 was better. But at this point, in my mind, engine is going to castle here, f4, stock standard, kingside push. I'm like, I'm going to hold castles, see what they do. And here the engine, after like five seconds, thinking does this. I'm like, hello, long diagonal, I'm meeting you. And as soon as this happened, I called it right away. And I don't know, I still don't know if it's true. But I called it that in this position, I could go queen a5, knight a4, queen takes, takes, bishop b2, check, and that's a draw. I saw that and I called it. Like, there is live footage evidence of this. But I didn't want to draw. Like, I was already losing the match. And I thought at this position, if I don't win this, I'm a total clown, right? Like, I'm an extra, I'm a piece up. I have got a deadly bishop. This king is weak as. If I don't win this, then, yeah, I shouldn't be here. Maybe I shouldn't have. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, queen a5 was my move there. And after knight a4, I thought that this would be a very, very cute draw by just going check, check, check. And it is a cute draw. And I saw it, but I'm like, yeah, it's not cutting it. So I played knight e7, h4, h5, just to shut that down. 
It's all 95 was about that. 984. And again, I was in a jolly mood. I'm like, okay, take me, bro. I was very impressed with this move because I'm like, if they take, I take back, and boy, this attack is now going to be irresistible. D c5, bishop d7, I push this down. Queen a5 is uh, incoming. It's just death. If they don't take, I'm going to take this. And so they played knight b2, which again came to me as a bit of a shock because I'm an idiot. And after queen, a, uh, queen c7, f3, I started to really hate my knight on e7. Really, really, really hate it. And uh, I just somehow got quite confused as to how to crack them. So I played d5. They went queen f2. Bishop d4. I'm very happy. Queen back. I pull back. Not that this was a biggie. But uh, I had some plans. Unfortunately, can't recall what. Oh, yeah. I wanted to go queen e5 at one point. And if c3, then what? I don't know. Anyway, king b1. Bishop a6. Obviously, plan c4. Plays g4. And I didn't play c4 here. And probably I should have. I mean, F3, G3 again is a typical move where you go like, dude, you can do whatever you want. And I just played very timid chess here. I was actually very happy to see this because I thought, okay, let's trade it off. And man, from here on, even just to re relieve this game is the most miserable experience. One of the most miserable experiences I've ever had over a chessboard. Goes here, I go, I actually totally overlook queen a5 and it's a very unpleasant move to face that bishop on a6 is awful the knight on e7 is horrid i'm like i i, I at this point i i began to feel like i'm a piece up and i feel like i'm a piece down not i'm not kidding so he defended that now i had to find some really clumsy way to defend this drop the pawn i'm whatever can't care less let's go end game no and puts the queen in a ridiculous spot. Wait, did I not bring up the last game? <gasps> the last game was insane, man. I have to show you that. Um, bishop d7, c4. Rook b4. And knight a4. And I'm like, man, I, I can't move my pieces. It's unbelievable that I'm a piece up and the guy is calling the shots. It's ridiculous. I had to defend the pawn, king a1, castles, queen back, d4. I thought, ah, no whackers, I will shut the center, I will come here, I will take this or this, and I will win. And I kind of was worried here about queen f6, to be honest, which was probably a totally unjustified fear. E4, uh, d4, and as you can see, my advantage is melting. Queen c1, I played here. I was super impressed the idiot again with this move thinking yeah they play lemon i go rook b3 and on your bike because after take stakes i'm just gonna pick off this you can't stop it why i thought that the engine would suck this in i have no idea because i'm playing against the machine that plays 3600 level right not smart plays rook g2 refuse the threat instantly and from here on my only sensible two ways to play this game. One of them is to sack, which I kept on considering, but never liked it enough to do it. And two, knight d5. Now, you might say that you should come to a conclusion like knight d5 because those pieces are so utterly useless. But when you are playing against a machine of that caliber with like three minutes on the clock, this is not going to come to you, my friend. I don't think so. And so this went just, and so I just sat there, sat there, sat there, and I'm like, what am I doing, man? Then plays rook h1. I still didn't take. I wanted to read out this knight to b6 to trade the knight, but I just was too late to the party. And that's it. Like, my bishop and knight did nothing in the entire game. And here I already called the loss. Queen g5, queen in h6. I can't even stop it.
like white is plus four here with a clean piece up for me and I've got nothing play 97 queen g5 I took it but they don't even need to take they just go h6 and queen f6 is unstoppable I did this and then that's it I just got mated rook up queen he mate I mean I don't even have legal moves left and that was that um, for some reason though I skipped one game which maybe I won't show you the whole game maybe I will uh, what was the one where the machine was white oh yeah that's it uh, I made a mass slip in this one too but in what I considered was probably a dead position. Watch this man. Same Dutch again. I'm like, bring it on, baby. He does d4. I play knight e4, right? So just work with me here. I'm a piece up. Plays an extremely dodgy uh, stonewall setup. And allows my knight to come to e4 to defend c5. Threaten knight c3. And play bishop takes, I mean, threaten bishop takes a1 on top of that. I kid you not, I played this move and no sooner than my, uh, did I put my knight on e4, this landed on my board right away. Literally, not a second. Not a second. I casually mentioned to the chair that surely this is incorrect. And I could hardly let go of knight e4. Instant answer from the computer, bang takes on c5 I was like wow man like now I take on a1 um, and I am a uh, full rook up I just copied into analysis mode because I want you to see it <clears throat> So, instant move, man. Instant. Bang takes on c5. Now, I sat on this for five minutes solid, of course. Because you don't know what to do. Because I really want to take, but I didn't like the fact that I have to take, take rook here, castles, um, rook d1. And this is where you become irrational about your own positions when you are playing against an engine. Because if you play this against a human, you go like... What's your story, bro? You are a rook up. You play this against the machine, and you go like, rook d5 is hanging, the long diagonal is weak, they have the two bishops, I wouldn't want to play this against an engine. And so you don't. And that's the call you make, which is utterly ridiculous, but that's how the human psyche works, perhaps when you are unprepared to play against the engine, perhaps even if you are prepared. So I didn't accept it, I just castled. Took on d5, knight c3, queen g5. I'm like, dude, I'm 100%, I'm winning. And I really wanted to go for this variation. And I really like my chances here. I thought that this position was great. I calculated this out loud several times and I nearly went for it. I mean, and I'm an exchange up, they have a pawn for it. But it's a very clean position, one that maybe I could go for. What I didn't like was rook a, rook a1, ridiculously enough. And after knight a5, c6. And again, I'm a full rook up. But now this is hanging and this is hanging. And I did see this too. So at points, I saw incredible depth that I'm, I'm really proud of, even as an IM, that I saw these very deep ideas. The problem is that... A, I couldn't come up with a better alternative, and B, as a result of that, there was no value in seeing it because I should have seen it before. Should have seen it before, not when it popped up. Same with the queen sack mate in game one or two. Like that, I was blown away by how I spotted that. Like, yeah, my, you're killing it, bro. It's so good. Except, what do I do now? And that was constantly the thing that I noticed a lot of tactics when they didn't quite hit me 
but I couldn't really do an awful lot about them anymore. And so this was the last game. And again, here, it seems I may have had a perpetual by doing this or a force draw. I don't know. But I actually decided to step out of it and play queen b8 and play for a win again with the idea of queen b6 hitting multiple things. And again, I don't regret that. I lost this game. I don't care. Um, I don't really think it's in the spirit of what we agreed to do to play for a stupid repetition like that. That's all good for Rajabov. Um, Bish went back, knight here, rook d1. Oh, and this one was actually also ending on a very ugly mouse slip by me, but uh, probably in a position where I was already not doing too well. Knight e4. I thought I was doing great here, and the engine approves. I don't even remember what went sour here. Oh yeah, I do remember now. Um, I played this move, which was not exactly my finest ever. And I overlooked bishop takes a6 here. That really sucked. Again, my position is no longer fantastic, but playable. But here I sucked this in. And then what happened here is that I played queen a7. As in, I held the mouse. I executed queen a7. And I pre-moved queen c7. But when I pre-moved it, I accidentally did the pre-move to b7. And so this is how this game ended. And I the, the whole thing went so fast that I couldn't cancel the pre-move. And so I just gave up. But I just wanted to show you this game because uh, I, even if I do take this back, I'm only up, yeah, minus one. And technically, they have got three pawns for the piece. I'm pretty sure I would have lost this. And even here, I saw tactics like the idea behind uh, playing bishop f6 and then not minding f5 is that I have to take, take f5. I can take and the bishop... Uh, escapes via d5 and the long diagonal is a safe haven for the bishop but what really threw me about this game was the fact that when i played 94 in a split second bang this lands on your board and again you know that the computer doesn't bluff but it looks silly so what do you do question that uh, grandmaster anthony weary weary We'll have to answer. On last note, I need to tell you because I was wondering about this from Larry, the programmer of Komodo. And he told me that when the computer instantly plays a move, that means that I played what it anticipated to be played. So that actually warrants 94 as almost best. But I just couldn't handle it. So this is how I ended up losing my match abysmally but fully justly to the mighty Komodo. If I can give you a piece of advice, don't play against machines. It's not fun at all. <laughs> no matter how you do it, it's not fun at all, man. Like, it's just the psychological part of it is so daunting to know that you really can't afford making a single mistake because you will be held accountable every single time. It's just... Yeah, a very unpleasant psychological factor that I couldn't really cope with too well. On top of that, I played garbage and yeah, the machine beat me like it should and well deserved. So congrats to Larry and to the mighty Komodo. Um, yeah, interesting experience. Not looking forward to repeat it again because yeah, it's, it's not fun, man. It's not fun to, to play against perfection. It's rough. So I hope you guys enjoyed it um, and I will be back with more soon. Thank you.